Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your, you can probably tell, delighted host, Kevin. I'm delighted because I've once again, I feel like a broken record, but I'm going to keep saying it. I've once again gotten to meet someone who I'm both excited now to know after just a few minutes of chatting and also really excited to share with you. So let me introduce you to Jana Day. Jana like banana, <laughs> which if I say it out, if I say it through my nose, I get it right. <laughs> Jana is a career and leadership coach, as you might expect. She has worked with leaders on the Fortune 100 and supported Academy Award and Emmy Award winning crews. She has credits on 25 animated feature films and a few TV shows. She is a cheerleader to her two sons, a sports enthusiast, which I'm going to have to resist talking about as best I can, as am I, <laughs> um, has a rescue pup named Sydney, which mm, I wish Sydney could come on the pod, but maybe maybe part two, Sydney will come in for a visit and has been married to her forever and always, her words, for 30 years now. Jenna, it is, it's lovely to meet you. It's a pleasure to get to know you a tiny bit. And I'm excited to talk to you on the podcast today. All three. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me, Kevin. I am absolutely thrilled to be here. Ah, that's, that's, that's music to my ears. So let's let's take it all the way back to the beginning. Not the beginning, beginning. I sometimes like okay. the threat. And like, let's not go back to like when I was born and I was on a sunny meadow <laughs> in 19, whatever. Um, let's go back to your beginnings as a coach. Now, this is often... I find that this story is a really good way to access what uh, what really drives the purpose and the passion of someone who's chosen to go into coaching. There's mm -hmm. often a moment, whether it's like a, a split second or like a sort of a moment that takes months or years to build up to, um, where you realized or someone told you in the right way at the right moment that coaching was either what you were already doing, what you would be excellent at, and or would be the best way for you to impact the world in the way you wanted to. So what was your superhero origin story as a coach? <laughs> Gosh, um, all of what you just mentioned, really. Um, <laughs> you know, I, as mentioned in my bio, I had been working in entertainment um, for a while and primarily in the animation studios. And as part of um, one of the things the animation studios do is go on college campuses um, and to different events or festivals. And we do so many portfolio reviews. And we talk mm -hmm. to a lot of students and up and coming artists and provide feedback. And the industry itself is just a very generous industry. Um, there's a lot of give, um, you know, to the people that are trying to trying to break into it. And so in that sense, I had been coaching for years, mm -hmm. um, you know, without really the title. I had also been part of, um, you know, a production executive team where we were helping people move from one position to another and helping them, you know, a lot of times I would talk with people and how to get them to that next role. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I unofficially had been doing it for, you know, for a while. Um, the transition or that light bulb, you know, moment, um, I had worked on, um, I had been with, um, Sony pictures animation for 18 years mm -hmm. and, um, we were just rounding into COVID, um, where people were starting to lock down and everybody, you know, did the, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> you know, question, <laughs> um, we were getting ready to work on, um, a very large feature film. Um, and I found, I lost my oomph. Um, you know, normally when you get to a project, I'm the type of person that rolls up her sleeves, I'm ready to dig in, I'm ready to go. And I just didn't have it anymore. Um, you know, I'd done so many of them um, and I was tired. Um, I just didn't, uh, you know, I just didn't have it. Um, and I was talking with my boss and um, a couple of things that were happening at the same time. Um, I had seen um, in our local community, there was um, a YWCA group that was starting up a career strive program, which works with um, underserved members in our community, as well as women coming out of the domestic violence program. And mm -hmm. they help them. It's a whole program and you, you bring them, we brought them really from start to resume to get them ready to, you know, go out and interview, to get them dressed, to, mm. you know, helping them find jobs. Um, and I was reading about that and I said that I want to do that. That is what I want to do. Um, you feel the energy rising up in you again when you when you encounter that? Like you, you you reach in to like get that oomph going and if you feel a little bit empty, but then you encounter that and you can feel your energy rising. Yes. Ooh, that's a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly it. So much so that I bugged them. I called them three times to say, I'm here. I'm in your neighborhood. I'm not in Los Angeles. I happen to be, you know, um, in Indiana, which is where I'm based because my husband's job is here. I'm in your backyard. I want to take all of this experience that I have and, you know, hopefully use it for somebody who, who, you know, just needs a hand. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, who just needs a helping hand. Um, and so I started doing that in my free time. Um, and at the same time, I was talking with our pastor and said, you know, we've been talking about different things. And he said, you know, there's a coaching program starting up. You'd be really great at this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started exploring and I, the woman I was working for, I had worked with her for a really long time and was talking with her. Um, and she said, she just casually said, are you giving me notice? And I said, yeah, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's, that was it. That's how I, that's how I, you know, got started. Um, it, I stayed with Sony for about six months till they were, you know, till they found somebody to replace me. But at the same time I was coach training and, you know, doing all the other things to, to ramp up to where, you know, to ramp up and ramp down. Sorry, that was a long, a long answer. <laughs> no, that's perfect. It, it usually is. I mean, and I'll, it was a long answer, but it was also you touched on so many points on the journey that I feel like it, it's kind of like I, I ended up accidentally framing the question in almost the perfect way for your story, because it really is like it's both a moment and like the work of months and years. Like when in, in hindsight, you look back and it feels like it's just the switch was flipped. But the yes. actual flipping of that switch was, well, then this happened and then this opportunity arose. And I had these feelings in my heart and in my gut. And then this person said the right thing at the right moment. And then this other opportunity opened up and then someone else recognized what was happening in me and identified it before I even had words for it. And it's like all this stuff kind of comes together. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. you find yourself doing the thing that you now in hindsight realize this is what I should be doing. This is this is what's really rolling up my sleeves for me and really has got, got that oomph going for me. <laughs> yes, I have my oomph back. <laughs> oh, oh, I might have to be the title of the episode, how Jana got her oomph back. A little, <laughs> little, 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 little play on, on a famous movie from the 90s. I'm, I think that might have to be the title, but there's so much I love about your story because it is so, it's so unique to you. And it's also, there's so much commonality. And having talked mm -hmm. to now with hundreds of coaches, there's just, there are these, these, these moments, these very recognizable, almost uh, milestones where it's like, and then the, and then the realization was that I wanted, this is, how I wanted to impact the world. This is how I wanted to serve. You see an opportunity to use what you've already gathered, expertise and experience and know-how and instincts mm -hmm. and you know emotional intelligence and the empathy that you've learned over the years and the decades. And all of it kind of comes together and you're like, this is where all of that could do the most good. Mm -hmm. And then and then you and then that thought leads to action. And that's that's the difference. Cause you can you can encounter those kinds of thoughts and feelings, but never they never rise up to that moment of action, that moment of, you know, pulling the trigger and taking the step, you know, whether it's off a cliff or just on the next path. And mm -hmm. that's what that's like every coach has put that, all of that into action with yeah. tr tremendous rewards. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Bigger than I could have ever imagined. Which is great because you, you, you have a feeling, but you can't see it. And that's kind of scary. You're like, is this going to be as good as, I think it's going to be great. But it's, it's almost like you have that too good to be true moment. In your head, where it's like, is it, am I really going to be this satisfied? Is it really going to be this like satisfying for me and good for me and good for my community and the and the world? Is it really all of that in a bag of chips? And it is all of that and bag of chips. <laughs> it is, and it was scary. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, from fear into joy. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what your coaching looks like in the present day. Now, um, I try usually ask this kind of as a two parter because I feel like it sounds a little bit like an interrogation, but it kind of gets at the heart of like the nuts and bolts of your coaching. Who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being who you tend to focus on, whether it's a certain demographic or a certain person at a certain stage of their personal or professional development, whatever that might mean for you in your in your practice. And the how being not even necessarily primarily, but you can talk about all the very the variations on how, like one to one coaching, where it's just you and the other person in a room doing work together, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Whether it's small group coaching, like masterminds, or even like like classroom size stuff, where you like lead people through a course. Um, are you have you written or are you writing a book? Which is always a question I ask with bated breath because it's usually you know either or both and. <laughs> so who do you coach and how do you coach them these days? Um. It's a great question. Uh, you know, <laughs> when I started, I would say it's a true two pronged sort of business model. Mm -hmm. Um, and that what's very natural and what comes very easy to me is career coaching, you know, and career advancement, just because that is what I've done forever. Um, and so I tend to work with clients who are in that kind of in that like 
30-ish ish range. They've been at their career for a little while. They're not sure exactly where they want to go next or how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I do a lot of career advancement coaching around that. Mm -hmm. Also, recently, there's been a shift in that where I'm getting, um, uh, I call them kids, but young people who <laughs> are um, a few years out of school and they're trying to figure, you know, figure out that next step for them. I I think mm -hmm. we're, this could be a whole different podcast, but I think we're just starting to see the tip of um, the kids who were really affected by the pandemic, whether they mm -hmm. were in school or, you know, they were graduating into, you know, a pandemic type world. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think we're just starting to see, I think it'll be a while before we see the effects of, you know, of all of that. So I lately I've been getting a lot of that as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I find with my career coaching is, um, we do very tactical things, which is a little bit more mm -hmm. consulting of, you know, resume, LinkedIn, branding, you know, practice interviewing, you know, um, all the way to salary negotiations. But what I partner that with is um, I do a lot of positive intelligence coaching, um, oh, yeah. which has been fantastic. And so we, I, pair, I, I figured it out lately where, I, you know, kind of pair it up together. Um, and so it really allows people positive intelligence or PQ allows people to get out of their own heads and hear, mm. stop hearing that negative self-talk or that doubt um, that really helps them move forward. And so mm. they oftentimes come for the tactical, but they end up, and they get that, but they end up leaving with so much more. And that's what they usually go, wow, I had no idea I even needed that. <laughs> It's um, just so good. It's almost like it's it honestly, it reminds me of uh, like just an approach to just trying to care about people in a general way. It's like you have to meet their their immediate needs first mm -hmm. and then you can begin to like connect with them and see about what might help them. You know, you, you, you can give you can give them the fish. And while they're eating the fish, you can teach them the fish, so to speak. Yes. I'm I'm sort of <laughs> I'm butchering that analogy a little bit, but it really is like you got to give them what they need what they can understand, very practical, very like, I, okay, I get this, I do this, I execute on that, here are my steps. And that gives you the opportunity to really get in and help them to, obviously they come to you with questions, like I, mm -hmm. a great uncertainty, but they might not have been able to articulate the question properly yet or the questions they have about themselves, their lives, the industry they're trying to move in or move up in. And right. then you can, that, that's where the coaching really comes in and shines because you help them to shape and coax the better questions out of them. So that then they're like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. I didn't quite know how to say that, but now I do. And that's, there you are. <laughs> well, are they, yes, absolutely. Or they know where they want to go. They just are a little hesitant or timid to get there. And if they can get out of their own way, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we can really build them up to a place that they feel solid and strong enough to start making those, I guess my coaching style then is also, you know, baby steps you know, mm -hmm. to get people to, you know, make out those, to reach out to those people and to make those network contacts and, um, uh, you know, and soar really it's, it's been really awesome to see where people go. Um, I, it's the ones I love are the ones where I think I know where they're going to go and they completely surprise me, <laughs> <laughs> um, and end up, uh, you know, just what's perfect for them, um, you know, and watching them, watching them succeed. Um, with that, I do leadership coaching. That's kind of the other side, the other prong of that is that um, having spent so much time in the industry, um, the animation industry, uh, you're oftentimes on a team um, of people and then you're really good at your job and they say, we want you to lead people. And that mm -hmm. transition can be really hard. You go from team mm -hmm. member to team leader. Um, and uh, so I do a lot, I, I do a lot of internal coaching for a couple of the studios where really guiding people and helping them through um, that transition and getting to a place where they're comfortable uh, and so that they can, you know, they can go on and lead and, and succeed and their team also um, succeeds. And so that involves not only positive intelligence, but a lot of emotional intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. So the, it's I so guess tough. the answer it's... to Sorry, the answer I guess is I do one on one, I do some group, I do some team <laughs> leadership. Um, yeah, but I've, it's kind of a two pronged 
sweet spot, if you will. <laughs> no, no, it's it's perfect. And I really, I, I, I don't think there can be enough light shown on this particular point because you have these people who are, they're great in their field. They're so good in yeah. fact, that they get promoted sort of out of their, their expertise and into yeah. something new because that, and those, those skills, and it's not just the skills, it's also the disposition and the approach. And like you said, the emotional intelligence that goes along with becoming an effective team leader, even in an industry in which you're already an expert. It's just, it's challenging. And, and again, I feel this is where the, the, the PQ comes right in too, because you're used to being good to great in the industry you're now a leader in. And so that yeah. feeling of you're good at what you do, but then you also have the self-consciousness and the, mm -hmm. the self-doubt that comes in from being in, a, in, a, in an unfamiliar position. And so you yeah. both feel confident and terrified and like, and self-doubting. It's, it's like somehow weird. They're like get tangled up in you somehow. And that's, mm -hmm. such, that's such a jungle to navigate, especially alone, or even with yes. like, you know, like you can't really like rely on, the people you're trying to lead because they're, you know, you're now the team leader. And so obviously there's good give and take there, but there's only so much that can come from that. It can be hard to get guidance of any real kind from, from higher up. It's yeah. not exactly like anybody that you go home and talk to, even if they know you and love you, you know, completely and tremendously, it's not like they can really help you through that. And so honestly, and I, I know I'm like, I'm almost blowing smoke up your butt now, but like that, you are the perfect <laughs> answer to that need, that gap. Well, and fortunately, one of the studios I work with really gets that, you know, um, mm. uh, productions move so fast that oh. they, there's really nowhere for people to turn, um, you know, to get some of those questions answered, or yeah. they don't even know what question to ask. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. And so being able to, um, to, to help, help transition that process um, and, and not have somebody feel completely beat up. Um, and also, you know, in the animation world, they're used to, you know, drawing or painting or whatever. And now they find themselves in a lot of meetings. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> they've also lost what they're passionate about and helping that, you know, helping find that balance as well is, yeah. is incredibly rewarding um, and humbling and, you know, just incredible to watch. And like you, like you, like you said, like you identified how so much of what someone already needs is already there. Both the, the ability and also the obstacles that might be in their way. You know, it's like the the the, the doubt that's crept in inside themselves or the self-talk that might be negative at best, you know, about who they are and what they can do in this new role or in this evolving role. Most of what they need and most of what's in the way is already there. You just kind of come mm -hmm. in and you, you basically direct attention. You're like, what about, what's that about? And you're mm -hmm. like, you know, you're pointing at like some behavior that you noticed or something that someone keeps saying in your meetings or your, your coaching, your coaching sessions. And you're like, so what's that about? And then you just let them talk or you, you mm -hmm. let them, you let them further illuminate thing. And you're, you're basically <laughs> standing there like holding the light. You're like almost like a gaffer or whatever, whatever, whatever the name is of whoever's, whoever's holding the light on set or whatever. And you're just like, <laughs> what about, what about that? <laughs> and it's, spotlight I'm, making here. It, I'm making it sound so simple, <laughs> but like we were talking a little bit before how, how simple it is and also how profound and how complex it gets. But like if you can, when you boil it down. It's just mm -hmm. those moments, those 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 better questions, that shining of a little bit of a light, that slight shift in perspective that someone like you as a coach is best, far and away best positioned to help someone with, to guide someone to. Mm, it's it is it is wonderful and powerful to be a part of that and to watch mm -hmm. somebody, you know, go through that, go through that that whole that process. You know, my favorite, my the, my favorite coaching call is I think I got this. You know, I'll talk to oh. you in a month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfectly said. And again, it is, it's, it's, it's the reason we all do this. It's like, there really mm -hmm. is, I mean, there's, there, there's, there are a, a great many joys in life. And I'm going to do that thing where I start to get almost poetic about it, but I, I'm very much in love with coaching. If that's can be said to be a thing. And, I, and almost every coach that I talk to is in love with it as well. And like yeah. with love, there's sometimes some poetry, but there really is nothing like that feeling of watching that light dawn on someone's face. So literally or figuratively, where it's just like there, you could you you're in the room or you're in the moment with them as they're getting it, and then yeah. you, again, like you almost hear that that tone or you almost hear that like that music to it, or it's just like you know the the, the sun rising. You know, now I'm getting very romantic about it, but you understand. I mean, it's you know you're in this for a reason too, and I can tell that you're oh. in love with with coaching and the people that you coach and you just love being a part of that relationship and that experience. And it really is like, it's almost contagious. Like I'm getting, I'm getting like some contact joy just from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what, for me it is, is when you see the shoulders drop, 
you know, the light bulb goes off and the shoulders drop and they're like, oh, Mm -hmm. all right. (laughs) Didn't realize those were in my ears, but they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I, f- I find that to be a, a very, a, a good physical analogy for me as well as like, whenever I could, whenever my shoulders drop down, they get out of my ears because mm-hmm. they were blocking my hearing in the first place. I had too much stress, anxiety. I was way too much in my head about it. And I wasn't really listening. I was, or I wasn't really capable. I was trying to listen, but I wasn't really hearing anything. And so when the shoulders dropped, the message became a lot clearer all of a sudden. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if I should really work on that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm doing the the pseudo responsible hosting, looking up at the Zoom clock, where it did the perfect time to break away. Even though okay. I feel like I could talk about this with you for for hours, I'm I feel like a broken record again. But this is just this is the stuff that gets me out of bed in the morning. This is the stuff that like we were talking about rolls up my sleeves and gets my oomph going. There um, you go. Before I go, I do want to give you a chance to talk about another two part question. And this one's pretty simple. Where can okay. people just find out more about you? like learn more about who you are as a coach, what you do. And if it's different, where can people best connect with you? If they wanted to start a relationship, start a conversation, just kind of follow along on your journey, um, Mm -hmm. or maybe just uh, are hearing you talk and they're like, that's the person I need in my life. And they want to like, they want to start that process immediately. Where can people go to do all that? Uh, The best place is probably my website, which is really easy. It's just (laughs) Jana, J-A-N-A, day, D-A-Y.com, janaday.com. Um, or I'm super active um, on LinkedIn. Um, I can connect with people there as well. Uh, but those are just probably the two best places to reach out. Reach out to me. Pretty pretty usual answer. I'm finding LinkedIn to be the least toxic and most effective social media platform for me these days. I can actually build real relationships there, whereas there's so much noise everywhere else. It can be it can be hard to to keep it keep it all keep it all signal and no noise. You know, LinkedIn's been quite a boon for that. It's I LinkedIn. This is probably another another topic, but yeah, LinkedIn has been has been absolutely fantastic in terms of um, client and business development and just re, you know meeting people where they're at. Well, I mean, we'll have to talk about it next time. I'm not, as you know, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to have a good guest back back around back around again. So, uh, as you know, we have a, a mutual friend, a mutual coach friend who's been on a few times. I'll probably have him on for a fourth episode sometime in the next few months because I just can't resist. And nice. I gotta tell you. You will definitely be a a return invite. I'll slide into your LinkedIn DMs, as it were, and and invite I you back on later that. in the summer and see how your see how your journey's going. Check in with you. I would love that. In fact, you could put both of us on at the same time. <gasps> oh, okay. Now I'm gonna have to really think about that to have you and Todd <laughs> on the same conversation. I might that might have to be a bonus, like an extra long episode. I might have to block off some extra time for that one. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for is, today. Thank you for your time today. It has today. been a this pleasure. Is- thank you so much for having me on, Kevin. And I look forward to um, future conversations and definitely listening to all your podcasts. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I am I am an embarrassment of riches. We're putting out three a week now just to keep up with all the conversations I'm having. And I was like, a part of me wants to start doing it daily, but then I've been my podcast production crew is going to, they're going to murder me if I try to do that. <laughs> We don't want but, that. This, but this is why this is the kind of this is the kind of real joy and purpose and passion that we love to share that I love to to share in. So thank you for being you and thank you for being on with me today. Thank you to the audience. Thank you for listening. Reach out to, to Jana, like, share, subscribe, do all the usual stuff you do with podcasts. But most importantly, if you're a coach, if you are receiving coaching, if you're thinking about coaching, if you want to learn more. Just do yourself a favor and just take action. Learn more about Jana, learn more about other coaches we talk to here and take the next step. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's even better than you can imagine. And I know that sounds fake, but it's real. So it, I'll leave you with that weirdly inspiring note because I'm feeling very, feeling, feeling very like sunny in my heart right now. Thanks to, thanks to Jana. So thank you one more time before I sign off. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you again here very, very soon. <laughs>